All right, so here's a overview of Forescan. Uh, more detail than my previous video. Uh, you want to go to Forescan. Uh, let's start over from the beginning here. Forescan.org. Oh, hey. My hotspot turned off. Or. Yes. Okay. One hour. I got one hour to finish this video. Maybe less. Alright. So go to Forescan, download, uh, you'll want to download the latest version, after you do that and install it, um, just go ahead and go to the link, extend license, open Forescan, come here, and there'll be a, a thing in here to copy your, your hardware information so that when you go to create your key because it uses the hardware information to create a key hardware ID and it, it's a simple thing you just hit copy to clipboard it does it you paste it in here you fill in this information hit generate it generates this here. You hit download. Uh, I send everything to my download folder so that when I come back in here, uh, hit load license key, you then uh, just hit the home button. It shows your, your home folder in Windows. Pretty much like that, you go to downloads and then you load your license key. Um, then you also want to make sure that you have all your drivers installed uh, for whatever device you have. Um, the Bluetooth I don't think needs drivers, it's just automatically detected. That's why I like the drive, the, the Bluetooth somewhat. Um, Go into Forescan and look at your connection details, make sure it matches the device you're using. Because um, you can switch this to be a USB device or to look at the COM, specific COM. Um, it's usually pretty good about finding everything on its own, but if not, you can play with some of these settings to get it to work. Like if you've got the USB connection, you'll have to go through. Um, not sure which one that is here. No, not MS Config. What's that one that shows uh, devices? Uh, man, I am not as schooled up on Windows that I used to be. Let's config. Um, let's try this one. Man. Oops. Is there still on my computer? This PC, so you can right click on that. Go to manage, I believe. And then go to device manager. That's what I was trying to find device manager. And this should tell you what USB things. See, in this 
uh, if your device is straight up USB, it would tell you what COM port it's on, and you can just connect through that way. Setting this up. But, uh, so let's go ahead and connect. Yes, it's 16. Uh, driver's door module is the last one for my vehicle that'll load so I know everything's loaded. Um, here you'll see issues. I already cleared them all. I had issues. I was dealing with a bad battery. So part of this video is going to be turning off some of that stuff that I had on before to see uh, if I can get my battery to last a little longer. tests that are mostly pointless to even do unless you actually have issues going on that you need to test them to see where the fault's at because otherwise it's just not very exciting to sit here and watch do kind of like that though but I'm not going to go through it um, reset clear transmission adaptive tables that's interesting because there's that and then I think there's maybe not okay so the clear transmission adaptive tables that means um, depending on how you drive it can make the transmission more aggressive or less aggressive depending on how you drive um, if it knows that normally when you go to try to go for 50% throttle it's going to think that you're wanting to go someplace really quickly and it's going to boost up the the transmission pressure in order to shift a little bit quicker but if it if you normally you're a you're a slow driver and take everything slowly it's not going to boost the pressure right away and uh, you can if you hate the way the previous driver was or you just your driving habits have changed and you don't like how the transmission feels you can go and clear it and uh, hope that it relearns your new way of driving and that everything feels better um, so the as built is you get to see everything in the hexadecimal format and make manual changes yourself. I highly suggest you to go through each every one of these and save all before you make any changes if this is your first time on Forescan. This will make things easy to uh, bring everything back to default if you screw anything up. Looks like I haven't made a backup on this computer using this. I do know I have a backup on uh, another hard drive, so I'm not really worried about it, but this is how I'd normally do it. Since I'm in the APM, I'm gonna save this as APM. Bam. Uh, also, I made it in Forescan. That's in Documents, so that's cool that I've got a Forescan folder in Documents. That's where I'm gonna find my files. Uh, I don't have any changes I'd like to make in this one. I can show you how to make a change in which the easy one is in I thought it was called the IPM. Maybe it's IPC. Well, let me make sure. So let's go out of that. IPC at yeah, 720. So these first three will kind of tell you which one they're in. Um, on my forum, uh, I try to list all of it, just make it as easy so you have other things to double check to make sure you're in the right spot. Um, 
for your physical vehicle, I would make sure to Google search or use whatever search engine you'd like to and just four scan, four Taurus, see what comes up, um, see if there's any information on your vehicle. Um, most of the time you're going to find some good information. Uh, you're probably going to have to actually sign up for the forum to read everything possible. Um, at least try to go f through the first three pages before asking any questions. Kind of get a grasp by watching this video and reading the post of what people have done because nothing yet is like straight out black and white, this is what you do, this is the process. Um, people are still figuring things out since we don't have an engineer that can come in and tell us, oh, this is how you turn this and this off, or this on. Um, some things that are more complicated, there's nothing I've found for the Taurus that is this complicated, but there are some things like on the F-150 to get towing features turned on, you got to go through the BCM and the PCM and a towing module that I don't have and you got to make all these changes all at the same time otherwise you're gonna get errors or it's just not gonna work but Taurus it's pretty easy uh, so IPC I want to turn on this one here um, as built at the start uh, so what I want is an 0102, the change, oh wow, looks like even the last time that I did this it's a little different, but I believe BA what I want in here. B A F C A yep. And the rest of it's gonna change because it's a uh, now there's no write or store in here so you just hit write all. Actually no because since that's not I don't even have the default configuration I want to just quit out of that before it made any changes. Go back in. Uh, hit save all. We'll call this IPC. Now we go and make our changes. Write all. Yes. Yes. Things just flashed on here, you didn't get to see it. Uh, but, uh, and it tells you to turn off your ignition stuff. I don't know what for for sure. Maybe they think it's precautionary, but most times it's it's just okay to continue with your, your business. Which nothing, it didn't come on, so. Let's go ahead and try this and see if that actually brings it. I go ahead and open the door just to make sure it's got a full shut down. All right, so that was not the correct change. Um, let's try 8A then. which I don't understand that being the correct way. Or... Let's see. Maybe it's because I didn't have the full thing in there correct. I even have to look at the right spot. O2... No, I am completely a line too far over. So we're going to load all from our APC. Um, 
and start over from over here. Yep, okay. B A F C. Now let's see. Aha, yep, there we go. So we got it back. I don't care too much about it. Um, it can make you concentrate too much on it and it's unsafe for me. Also, I'd rather just use Torque if I really cared and log it. I already know this is mainly a front wheel drive car and that as you put more gas into it, everything transfers to the rear. So, uh, let's hit stop. Um, so this one here shows you that they've got it programmed in and you can just go and select it. With uh, some vehicles, Doing it this way can actually create issues. Um, I don't remember why. That's why if you can figure out the, the true code for your vehicle, just do it that way. Uh, it's easier to... Um, easier to make the change and go back. Because... Now it'll, when I go to here, even though it made the change, in this it won't show that it's actually there. What was that, a three? Alright, maybe it did change. Uh, I remember before looking at it, um, they might have changed something or I just overlooked it before. But uh, sometimes those changes don't reflect on the actual code itself. Um. You know how to do the backup, you know how to make a change, and that's it. Um, I want to try to fix my battery issue, so I'm going to show you what else we got here. That's not the one I want, because I don't know what changes I can make in there. RFA. Task configuration. Um, all right, yeah, I'm I'm fiddling with things after this, and I don't really feel like walking with the camera, walking you through all this. But that is the main gist of everything. Um, if you have any other questions and want me to do another video on on something else I didn't show with enough detail, go ahead and make a uh, make a comment, and I'll try to do it. You can tell from some of the other comments it took me a while to get to this video finally. So uh, thanks for sticking around.